Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and today I'm very excited to bring you an in-depth review of the brand new Playdate handheld. Now, when this thing was first announced, a lot of us we were like very curious as to how this thing was gonna work. I mean, as you see here, it has on the right-hand side an analog hand crank, but that's not the only thing that makes this thing kind of weird and unusual. Now, I've been playing with this thing for over two weeks, and a lot of it I like, and some of it I'm like, what the heck were they thinking? Let's take a look. So we're gonna go ahead and start with an unboxing, but I do wanna let you know that this was sent to me for review. However, I had actually pre-ordered my own copy back when it was announced. But just be aware, all of the views and opinions in this video are my own. Now, the first thing you notice with this box is that you definitely get the feeling that this is a premium product. And well, that's because it kind of is. This thing costs $180 which does seem fairly high in price. However, as we get into the games and kind of what it offers, you see that that price also includes 24 games released in season one. So just be aware it's 180 bucks and you get 24 games. And my initial impression of this is definitely of a higher quality product. It doesn't feel cheap in any way. Uh, it was designed in Portland, Oregon, and it just has this kind of whimsical, fun feel to it all. Walking around the device on the top is the power button. Then right below that on the face is the home button. Below that is the speaker. Then you also see that it has a D-pad and A and B buttons. On the bottom, you have a stereo headphone jack as well as a place to plug in and power up that USB-C cable there. And the battery in this will give you about 14 days of standby or eight hours of active play. There's also Wi-Fi built into this as well as Bluetooth support and you get about four gigs of internal flash memory. And of course you have that crank. So that's the big feature of this. That's the kind of unusual selling point of this. And for the most part, you can use it all the time or not at all. It really depends on the game and whether they decide to use it. And I have to say, it feels really good. And we're gonna get into a bunch of games here in a bit. Here are some size comparisons. So this is the Playdate sitting next to an original Game Boy Color. So as you can see here, it is significantly smaller than that. And here it is next to the Game Boy Advance SP. And as you can see, they are very similar in size. Now what's wild about it is that the Playdate is pretty much just the thickness of the SP's screen. It's amazing how technology has miniaturized and improved over, what, two decades? And you'll notice that the Playdate has an even smaller screen than the SP. So let's go ahead and talk about that display. So as you see, it's relatively small. It only has a resolution of 400 by 240, and it is only black and white. And it's also non-backlit, but it is very reflective. So what does it mean? Well, I will tell you, it definitely functions better than say those original Game Boys or you know Game Boy Advances that came out in the mid nineties, but not being backlit in 2022, I think is a huge misstep. Now, don't get me wrong. If you happen to be sitting somewhere where say there's a window behind you and the sun is shining in, or maybe you are on a couch and there's a bright light behind you, this thing is perfectly usable. It looks great. I mean, the display and the graphics are incredibly sharp, but if you are not sitting somewhere bright or perhaps you are trying to play this at night or maybe you're sitting next to your significant other while they're watching TV and the lights are a little bit dim, this thing becomes almost unusable. It's, it's really a bummer. And I'm trying to figure out why they did that. I mean, maybe they did it to save money. Maybe they did it to save battery life, but Again, in this day and age, I'm sorry, but it really needs to be backlit. And I get that maybe this is part of the charm of using this device and maybe this won't be a big deal to you. But over the course of several weeks, I found myself many times wanting to mess around with it and I just wasn't in the right spot in my house or it was at night or whatever and you just can't use it. 
So for me, that's just a huge caveat for this thing. Honestly, if it is a price issue, I wish they would have just maybe given people the option, you know, maybe give people the option of say, paying $20 more for backlit, I would have jumped at the chance. So we walked around the hardware, but the thing that really matters are the games. Are they fun? And this is where things get a little bit tricky because this device is different than almost any other one I've reviewed because of how the games are delivered. And like I said, this device is $180, but that includes all of the season one games, meaning that every week when you get this, you're gonna get two new games for 12 weeks. And for many people, the anticipation and surprise of getting those games is a big appeal of this. And so before going further into this video, I wanna warn you that if you wanna go into this completely blind, you may not want to watch the rest of this video because I am gonna have to show some of these games running and give you some of my thoughts just because that's part of a review, right? Also, I'm not gonna spoil all of them. I'm not gonna talk about every single one of the games. I just wanna highlight some of them that I think are kind of interesting or maybe do affect whether you would want to own this or not. All right, so with that caveat said, I'm gonna go ahead and continue here. And you know, basically this thing does deliver on the promise of trying to create something new, something different, and also something fun. And while it does that by using the crank, it's really because the games are varied across many different genres. I mean, there really is something for probably everybody. And the way that this delivers games is pretty neat. Now, as a reviewer, I got a very kind of quick version of this. They basically sent all of them at once. But the way it works is that you know, every week you're gonna basically get a little notification on the play date that tells you that you have something waiting for you. Uh, they just show up automatically. And when you go in there, there's a really fun animation that plays as you open the game for the very first time. And thankfully games don't take up much space at all. You see under settings here, it shows you everything that you've got installed and how much space that it's using. And frankly, most of these games are 100 megabytes or less. Some of them much less than that. And as you see here, you know, I still have probably 75% of that storage available. So this thing is gonna be able to hold, I'm guessing probably hundreds of games over its life. And I was able to test side loading because I actually have an extra game on here that is not part of season one. So basically this is a game that is going to, I believe be for sale. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, basically I, you know, I was able to side load it. And the way you do that is super easy. So you can do it either through their website and it automatically downloads to the play date. You don't have to hook up anything or you can hook it up via USB to your PC and just drag and drop games over to it. It's really cool. Check out B360. So this is a really fun kind of new take on a classic breakout that we all played back on the Atari 2600. But what it does is it gives a new spin on it, literally using that crank. So instead of just being kind of, you know, very vertical, suddenly it's almost like Tempest where you're controlling your ship around and knocking them back and forth. So again, great use of that crank. Whitewater Wipeout looks very familiar to people who have played California games back in the day. It takes that surfing mini game that was included in that and basically just brings it over to the play date. And while I always enjoyed playing California games as a kid, playing with the D-pad was always tougher than it should be. And playing it with the crank here, again, just feels very natural. This is the way that the game should have originally played. So this is a fantastic version. Not every game necessarily has to use that crank. And actually I kind of like it because maybe not every game would be better with it. And so you see a couple of them here. This is the Playdate version of Snake. I guess they're calling it Snack, but you know, it's just the same classic simple gameplay that we all played on our first mobile phones. And it's a good little time waster here too. Here's a retro themed shooter called Battleship Gadios. This plays very similar to Gradius, but you have to catch your bullet after you fire it. So it bounces around. Very difficult game. Here's a game I enjoyed quite a bit. This is called Flipper Lifter. And basically what you do is you use the crank to raise or lower an elevator that picks up penguins. 
And then once you pick up a penguin, you have a certain amount of time to deliver them to the floor that they want. And as the game goes on, more floors are added. This is a really fun and simple game. Saturday Edition is an adventure game, kind of like the old school ones you would play back on the PC. I was kind of surprised to see this one here and it is really interesting. It deals with aliens and abductions and all sorts of weirdness. Sasquatchers is another game I was surprised to see on here just because I didn't know if we'd get these kind of games or not, but it is a turn-based tactical game. It's definitely got a sense of humor and it's surprisingly in depth. It definitely reminds me of Advance Wars. Omaze is a puzzle game that uses the crank a lot and also some very critical thinking. This was really hurting my brain after a couple levels, but it was, uh, it was definitely fun. Now, you know how I mentioned that the screen is kind of small? Well, some of these games, they're not really helped by that small screen and Boogie Loops, I think is one of those. So this is a rhythm kind of musical loop game. And basically what you're trying to do is make these different animals dance by composing your own music. And you do that by moving around these small little animal, I guess they're icons or whatever on the, the track there. But as you see, it's hard to be able to determine the different ones. I was like, wow, this is like, I mean, you can play it, but it's pretty tough. You gotta get your face right up to it. Also, some of the text in some of these games, especially some of the story-driven ones or the ones with a lot of dialogue, can be a little bit hard to read on that screen. Again, I just wish it was perhaps just a little bit bigger. Here's a game that I thought was pretty neat. This is called The Ratcheteer, and this is a top-down, old-school style action RPG adventure. And this one's definitely pretty fun, but it does highlight some of the challenges with the play date, specifically when it comes to games that use both the D-pad, the buttons, and the crank at the same time. In this game, the crank does multiple things. So for instance, if it's dark and you need to crank up your light, well, you spin the crank really fast, or you can also attack with the crank. But I think it's, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. Basically, I just think it's a little bit too small in my hand because playing a game like this where I'm trying to move around with the D-pad and use the buttons and also the crank, I was starting to get massive hand cramps because there's just no good way to hold this thing and do all of that. And many of these games did that depending on how long I played them and kind of what its control requirements were. Because again, you're, you have to you have to kind of steady the play date with your left hand, I'm right-handed, to then spin that crank. And in some of these games, it's very aggressive. <laughs> Sometimes you have to spin that thing as fast as you possibly can. And again, there's just kind of no good way to hold that sometimes. And while overall, I like the form factor of the play date, but part of me wonders if it was maybe just a little bit taller, kind of like a modern smartphone, right? We're so used to holding those in our hands that I just wonder if maybe a version two of this that they do maybe later on down the road just is a little bit bigger, a little bit easier to hold in your hand. Now, like I said, I'm not gonna cover every single game in this video, and to be quite honest, I didn't really get drawn to some of the more longer story-driven RPG games anyways, because in my opinion, the, the thing I like about this device the most is kind of its pick up and play feel to it. And those were the type of games that I gravitated towards, the more arcadey, again, you're gonna play for a couple minutes, you know, maybe 10, 20 minutes max. I didn't really find myself getting into games that are gonna be hours long, because like I said, the screen is, not great and it just feels a little small <laughs> both the screen itself and also the device and so i i got kind of tired of holding it after a while so overall what do i think of this thing well as you can tell by this video it's it's a bit of a mixed bag for me it's it's kind of tough because i do like how they're trying to do something new fun innovative and interesting and that is so rare these days but I also feel like they made just a few too many compromises when it comes to its design. The screen is great if you have the perfect lighting, but I do think it's too small. And, you know, honestly, in 2022, we should have a backlit screen at the very least. And even though the price at $180 is pretty steep, you have to factor in that you're getting 24 games with that. So, you know, that's definitely a nice thing. 
And they've made the developer kit available to anybody. So I suspect that we're gonna start seeing community-based games out there for this that people are gonna be able to either buy or just download for free, which again is pretty cool. It's gonna be very interesting to see what people come up with. I think there's gonna be a lot of creative games out there for this. But I would love to know what you think about the play date. Did you pre-order one? Was it on your radar? Is this something that you are interested in? Or what would you like to see them do in version 2.0 if they if they get there? I assume that they're probably at least thinking about it at this point. So love to know what you guys think. And as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care.